Hello everyone, this is Sushant. So welcome to your channel which is Sci Engineers. For the people who are new to this channel, we have been uploading videos for the first year engineering students and also for the 11th and 12th standard students for the science stream. You can go through the playlist of this particular channel wherein we have categorized the videos according to the different topics. So if you are new to this channel, please do subscribe and also hit the like button and also the bell icon to never miss a notification from us. So we are from Samartha Vidya classes which is group tuitions for the engineering and science students. If you want to inquire about us, you can just visit our website which is www.samarthavidya.com or you can even visit our Facebook page which is for Samartha Vidya. The link for the website and the Facebook page is given in the description below. Also do leave your comments on what more videos you would like us to make on and also let us know how do you find these particular videos. So let's get going with today's topic. So from this video onwards, we'll be seeing a new subject which is going to be in your second year for the electronics and telecommunication students or even for the electronic students, which is called as your circuit theory. So this particular subject is basically an extension for your BEE, which was in your first semester of your first year of engineering. So today we are going to be dealing with the topic which is mesh analysis, which is going to be dependent on the dependent source. So let us try to understand this topic, which is mesh analysis by this particular example. If you want to get your basics cleared about what exactly mesh analysis is, you can just visit our video which was made for the BEE section of the mesh analysis. The link for that video will be given in the description below. So having a look at this particular problem, trying to understand what the difference is between the basic question of a mesh analysis and the dependent source problem related to your mesh analysis. First of all, you have to identify what basically is a dependent source. Now these symbols you will be familiar with that is it's nothing but a voltage source. So from now we will be calling it as a independent voltage source. It's basically independent because the value of this particular voltage source does not depend on any other parameter which is present inside the circuit. So whenever you are having a symbol like this a rhombus in that you can either have the polarities which are given to it or it can be the arrow. So it can be like this. It can be a rhombus with an arrow inside it or it can be something like this with a polarity. So whenever you are having a polarity, it's nothing but a dependent voltage source and whenever you are having a current or basically the arrow over here, it's nothing but the dependent current. Source. So in this particular problem, we have basically two voltage sources and you can see the parameter or the value for this particular voltage source is dependent on the value that is 2iy. And this is for 2ix. So this value itself you can understand that the voltage of this particular voltage source is dependent on the parameter which is present inside the circuit. Like you can just see iy is nothing but the current which is flowing through 4 ohms and ix is nothing but the current which is flowing through 1 ohm. So that is what basically the idea about dependent current sources are or voltage sources are. So the, to be precise, this two voltage sources are nothing but your current dependent voltage sources because the value of the voltage source is dependent on the current which is flowing inside the circuit. So getting the basic cleared, now let us move ahead with what basically how to apply basically the mesh analysis in this particular problem. So if you just recollect or if you just have seen the video for mesh analysis, you will be understanding that the first thing which we have to do is we have to assign the mesh currents in this. So we can see that there are basically two meshes. So we'll be assigning the current to it. So let us say this is my current I1, which is in the mesh one. And this is my current I2, which is in the second mesh. So once you have assigned the mesh currents, then the next step before going on with the equations is you have to represent the parameters which are present in terms of the variables which are going to be there. So the parameter by parameter, I mean the parameters which are used for your dependent voltage sources. Now you can see that I X is nothing but the current which is going to be flowing through the one ohm you have to represent Ix in terms of I1 and I2. So Ix is basically going downwards, 
the current I1 is also going downwards and I2 is going upwards. So that is why the equation which you get for Ix is nothing but I1 minus I2. So you have represented Ix in terms of I1 and I2. Then the next thing is you have to represent Iy which is the second parameter in this particular circuit. You can see that Iy and I1 are going in the same direction. So you will be having that Iy is nothing but equal to I1. The I2 is not flowing through that particular resistance so we do not consider it. After you have given the parameters their particular variable equation then you can go by the simple that is applying the KVL in the meshes. So I hope you know how to apply the KVL equations. So the KVL in mesh 1. So just going from here so you can see it's going to be minus 5. It's nothing but minus 5 I1. Then the next is it's a voltage source. The rules apply the same just like your KVL equation that is minus 2 Ix. Then next we have this that is minus 4 I1 and then this, vo vo uh, this resistance which is having the two current that is I1 and I2. So that is why it will have minus of 1 into I1 minus I2. And then again this voltage source which is going to be plus 2 Iy. This entire thing the summation of all the voltage drops and the voltages in the particular circuit is 0. That is what is KVL. <clears throat> so after you have written this particular equation then the next thing what you have to do is you have to replace the parameters which are present in the circuit with their corresponding values which you have written over here. So basically you will be replacing the Ix with I1 minus I2 and you will be replacing the Iy with I1. You need to just expand this equation and write it in the corresponding form. So after opening the bracket taking in terms of I1 and I2 together you will be getting this particular equation. You can just see you have a minus 5 I1 from here. You have a minus 2 I1 then minus 4 this minus 1 and plus 2. So that's why you get a minus 10 I1 over there. Then in the next equation you are having the I2 terms together. So you get a 2i2 then plus 1 so that's why it becomes a 3i2 the 5 just goes over there becomes a positive 5 so that's why you are getting the first equation so let us name it as equation a then after that we will be going for the second loop or the second mesh so kvl in mesh 2 so in the KVL of mesh 2, you will be getting the equation as starting from this end. So it's minus 2 I2. Then it's minus 10. Then you will be having minus 2 Iy. And then minus 1 into I1. Sorry, it's going to be I2 minus I1 because we are in the second mesh this entire addition is going to be equal to 0. Then again we have to replace your the parameter that is Iy. You can see it's I1. So simply replacing it. Taking the I1 terms together, I2 terms together and equating it. So you can see over here the I1 terms. So it's minus 2 I1 over here. Then it's a plus I1. So that's why you're getting this as minus I1. Then in the second, you I2 you have to see that this is going to be minus I2 I2. This is going to be minus I2. So that's why you're getting this as minus 3 I2. And this will be equal to 10. So nothing more to do. We have to just solve A and B simultaneously. You can use your calces for that. And you'll be getting your corresponding I1 and I2. Value. So you got your I1 and I2 solving simultaneously as minus 3.64 and minus 2.878 correspondingly. Then I need to find the basic thing is you have to find Ix and Iy. So Ix is nothing but equal to I1 minus I2. So you have to just subtract these two values. 
so we'll be getting the answer and your i y is nothing but equal to i 1 so that is nothing but this particular value which is minus 1.364 so this is how the method which we follow for your mesh analysis for your dependent sources so if you want us to make more videos on this particular topic please do write in the comment section also if you want to suggest any new videos any new topics please do write in the comment section please do like our videos please do share our videos and don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon to never miss the video so this is sushant signing off for today so keep learning keep watching and happy learning bye